Okay, here we go, back again. Just thought um, we would do another quick transplant of something a little bit bigger this time. This is butternut squash and it was sown on the 18th of March. So, if we have a wee quick look at it first of all, have a wee look at our seed leaves, our cotyledons remember. See how they're starting to go yellow and they're coming off. Okay, they're starting to die off a bit so that's perfectly normal remember. Okay, if we have another look though at our leaves, and there that's a better one. Round here, however, have a wee look at this one. Okay, so you can see that the veins on the leaf are starting to go a little bit yellow, a wee bit chlorotic. That's the term that they use for the yellowing. And basically all that could be is possibly one of two things. Could be a lack of light. Okay, so they end up stretching towards the light, particularly if they've been inside because these have had to be sewn under glass, of course. More likely, it's running a little bit low on nitrogen. So there's another good indication that these wee guys are needing putted up. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Leaves are telling us, and we should have, if we look at the bottom, evidence. Hopefully that won't go too bloody. You can just see some of the little roots starting to peek out the bottom. So that's another good wee sign that these are needing putted on again, remember. So showed you that in the last part. Pop that over there just now. Now I have run out of pots officially and what I'm using here is a house plant, plant pot. <laughs> not easy for me to say. Um, this is not ideal primarily because there's no drainage in the bottom. I don't have a pot left in the house that's bigger so um, I'm kind of going to have to use this just now but ideally I would have something with drainage holes in the bottom for this okay. So let's go prepared the compost as before okay so this is a slightly different compost to the seed compost that we used earlier to get our seeds to grow we tap down again just firm it up and I'm just going to split this okay you can see that about half full in there I'm going to push that out of shot a wee minute what I'm going to do is just split these up hopefully you can see these keep my label Squeeze it out gently, tease it apart gently. Okay, so just very, very gently, just start to break it apart. Now you are going to damage roots, that is inevitable. Goodness, there's actually three there. Okay, but what you want to try and do is just do it really, really gently. Minimum distress is best. Okay, these two are not coming apart very easily at all. Keep teasing. There we go. There we go. That's better. Pop these to the side just now. Let's deal with this one. Okay. Now, normally you could handle it by the cotyledons, but not at this point, because if you do that, the chances are that's just going to fall off. So now, now I would handle it by the true leaves when it's a little bit bigger. Okay. And we're just going to put it in there. I'm going to give it a little bit of support. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing here. This is not easy. My camera skills are non-existent. And then we're just going to fill up with our new compost. So slightly richer in terms of nutrient levels. Okay, so this is a cuttings compost if you like much more nutrient levels in it and I'm not too worried about the fact that those little cotyledons, those little seed leaves have fallen under the level of the soil there. That's not important. They're dying off anyway, remember the plant doesn't need it. A little bit of firming up as before. Just firm back in round about those roots. I might just add just a wee touch more in. Just filling it up. Give it a wee shake, give it a wee pat down, and again just firm up. Okay, keep my label, pop that back in. There we go. Only, oop, turn it round. Only other thing I would do now, give it a wee water, take it back indoors. A little bit early to be hardening these guys off just now. Um, still a wee bit too cold.
Okay, everybody, back in the conservatory. Um, great space uh, for growing things and perfect opportunity to talk to you about something that you need to just be a little bit careful of in your seedlings, okay? So you sow your seeds, you get them all germinated, they start to come through. And because it can still be a little bit too cold in our area just to bung stuff straight outside, we can't do that here. You keep them on a windowsill or somewhere like a conservatory or a cold greenhouse outside somewhere. But the light levels just aren't quite right for them. So you don't want seedlings in bright, bright sunshine because that's not good for them either. But they do need a good balance of light because what can happen is you end up with what's called etiolation. Now, you don't need to remember what that is, but just look for the fact that the, the plants themselves can become quite long and leggy looking. Okay, they grow really, really tall and you think, oh my God, that's amazing. Um, but what's actually happening is they're trying to reach the light. Okay, and they become etiolated. And the other thing that you will see, so etiolation, just long and leggy. And the other thing you will see, ah, oh, there's a better example there. Let's have a look at this one. You might see a little bit of discolouring on the leaves as well. Okay, oops, can get this one back out of the way. Focus on that one. Okay, so you might see the leaves going quite yellow. Now, all of the leaves will go yellow. This little plant's telling me something else here. But all of the leaves will go yellow. They become really, really long in the sections between leaves. Yep, if we move up, there's another one. So you get really long internodes. And that just means sections of the stems. They become really, really long. Okay, so that's one thing to watch. Now, what's happening... There are two things going on here. You have what is called geotropism. And geotropism is just the roots of the plant wanting to go down the way. Okay, so when that little baby root comes out, it's being pulled by gravity and it wants to go down the way and that's called geotropism. The other one that we've got is what we call phototropism. And what phototropism is, is the leaves and the stem wanting to go up the way and grow towards the light. Okay, so that's quite important um, and a little thing to remember when we're managing our seedlings. Okay, so it is a fine balancing act. What you're trying to do is balance the amount of light that these seedlings get. You want them to get the right amount of light because you want them to grow nice and steady, but you don't want them to become long and leggy. Okay. Or chlorotic so the leaves can go all yellow. Now just moving on from that what we've got here and um, this is a little seedling tree uh, full of tomatoes and what you can see is if I go this way you can see that there's a bit of movement yeah now I've actually turned this tree already but these were all pointing towards the window earlier on today Okay, so what's happening here with this phototropism that I was talking about, with the fact that this little seedling wants to grow up towards the light, this is really quite incredible, up concentrated in around near the top of the growing tip here is a substance called auxin. And with that wanting to go towards the light, the auxin builds up at the opposite side of the stem and it enlarges it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and what that does is then actually starts to push your little seedling towards the light and it keeps it going towards the light okay so that's actually what's happening there it's quite incredible when you start to get into uh, the sort of botany side of this I find it quite interesting okay but again you don't need to remember that you just need to remember that that this is trying to push itself towards the light all the time so if you find that you're looking at a tree of seedlings and they're all pointing towards the sun coming through the window then all you need to do just once a day is just turn the tree around and that will help to keep them growing nice and straight okay so this time what I've got here <clears throat> little tree of um, melon seeds okay little pot of melon seeds just a little word on watering, okay? Because um, you just want to be a little bit careful with your watering as well, okay? So I'm just going to turn this tap on nice and slowly. 
we're just going to get a nice little run like that. Now I do tend to use tap water with my seedlings because I don't want them to get damp enough. Okay, so what I want you to try and concentrate on is not soaking all of the leaves on your little seedlings, okay? What I want you to try and concentrate on is the root zone. So try and get that water right into the root zone. Okay, and this is what I do with them when they're really, really small, just to water them and get it right down into that root zone. Okay, that is quite important because what's happening there, if you just turn that off, we sound, you'll hear me better. What's actually happening there is the nutrients that are available in the soil to the young seedlings at this stage, some of them in particular calcium, are mobile in the water. So what does that mean? If you don't water it, then they can't reach the nutrients. The water is passed from the soil via the roots into the plant in water molecules. Okay, so you need to manage your watering quite carefully as well. And just remember, for any plant, not just seedlings, but for any plant, if you have them too dry, some of those nutrients will be locked up in the soil and your plant will not be able to access them. And this is where watering really is a bit of a black art. It's knowing when to water, okay? You don't want them absolutely soaking. So for example, cucumbers are quite thirsty plants, right? So they do need a fair amount of water because if you think about a cucumber, it's a high percentage of water, isn't it? It's very juicy when you eat it. However, they might like a lot of water down in the root zone, but what they don't like are cold, wet necks. Okay, so you don't want that soil absolutely soaking all the time with cold water. But you do want them to be damp enough to be able to access the nutrients that are available in the soil. So if we have a look at um, field capacity then, what that means is the amount of water the soil can hold against the force of gravity basically so think about when we have rain and when that rain stops the water that moves down through the soil and through the pores which is properly known as gravitational water you and i would call it excess water that excess water continues to train down through the soil but pulling in with it a fresh supply of oxygen to your roots so that's basically what we mean by field capacity okay Right, what we're looking at here then, um, I want you to use your imagination a little bit. So just pretend that you're looking through a magnifying glass at some soil particles. And what we're looking at here is this field capacity, okay? So there is a film of water around each of the soil particles that you can see. There is also excess water available within the soil particles themselves. And there are also air pores, air gaps, oxygen present within the soil particles as well. And this is ideal, this is what we want for our plants. We want enough water to keep the plant turgid. And all that means is standing upright and looking alert. Yeah. So we want to keep that plant looking normal. We want the nutrients to be available to the plant because we know now that some of the nutrients are mobile in the water. And we want the plant not to have um, waterlogged roots. Okay, so this is ideal. This is what we're looking for. So what we're looking at this time with this picture, this is permanent wilting point. And basically what that means is that there is not enough water content in the soil to keep the plant upright, alert and turgid was the phrase that we used in other keeping it standing up under its own support system, okay? There are two types. There is temporary wilt point and there is permanent wilt point. Temporary wilt point is recoverable. In other words, if you gave that little plant some water within a couple of hours and most certainly overnight, the plant would recover and look normal again. With permanent wilt point, that isn't going to happen and you will have lost your plant. 
Now, if you look at the picture this time, you'll see that all there is left is a very, very thin film of moisture around the soil particles and molecules themselves. There is no excess water left within the rest of the soil structure and there is lots and lots of air gaps on this one. So once you've reached permanent wilt point, the plant is not recoverable and you will lose it. So, how did permanent wilt point occur? It could have been weather, meaning too hot. Okay, so lots of lots of sunshine and the weather's become too hot. It could be wind. Wind causes the plants to lose a lot of moisture as well. What you could have had is a combination of sun and wind, which is really, really drying on your plants. It could also be the fact that you just forgot to water it, okay? Okay, so what we're looking at this time is the saturation point. Now the saturation point of a soil is when the water has filled all of the soil pores. In other words, there is absolutely no room left for anything else. So the soil particles, each of the soil particles have that water film around about each particle. There is water all around them in every area of the root zone. And more importantly, there is no space left for oxygen. So your roots are now waterlogged and it can't then supply oxygen into your plant because every available pore has been filled with water. So all we have to think about really is if it gets heavy rain outside, we can see that rain building up on the surface of our beds and borders and in our pots and things if they've not got good drainage, can't we? So you can see puddling, okay? And you would see lots of standing water around as well, that would be your evidence. So we don't ever want our pots and our borders to reach that point because that means that for the plants within that root zone there is no oxygen available to them and they are now anaerobic, they are without oxygen. The rot um, then starts to occur in the plant roots and from that point you've really lost your plant or your seedling. So ideally we always want to keep our water levels within our pots for our seedlings and within our plants as that kind of middle range where you've got enough water to supply the plant and keep it upright but not so much water that there isn't any oxygen within the root zone. Now there are also some exceptions of course if we think about aquatic plants for example. Now they are designed and will cope with having their roots in water. So what we're looking at this time is a little cucumber plant which has a temporary wilt. Now if you look at the surface of the soil there it is starting to look a little bit on the dry side and you can see that the young seedling has collapsed. So all it's needing at this point in the temporary wilt point is for water to be added to the pot and you can recover and rescue that little seedling from this point. It would most certainly recover overnight, but it would certainly start to look better after a few hours. And in fact, in this little specimen, it only took about an hour before the plant was standing up by itself again and was turgid. So just remember that phrase, turgid. It just means there's enough water held within the plant to keep its structure and keep it standing upright. So here's the same plant just a few hours later, our same cucumber seedlings, and this time they're obviously looking a lot better. So this is what we would describe as turgid. So how do you know how much water to give them? If you look at the surface of the soil itself, and if you were to touch it, if 
you pick some soil up in between your fingers and rub it and it goes away to like fine fine sand and just crumbles away between your fingers then it's probably too dry. On the other hand if it's too wet you might start to see the soil discolouring. Now I know that sounds a little bit strange but it can discolour, it can go kind of brown or you can get like white moulds growing over the surface and it smells a bit funny. If it starts to smell a bit funny and you can actually see water present in the soil very easily then you've given it too much. If you were to stick your finger in a pot where the soil water content is just right, stick your finger into the soil take your finger back out the soil and have a look at the end of it. If you've got some little bits of soil particles actually sticking to your finger and they feel nice and damp and moist between your fingers then you've probably got it just about spot on. So here's another little part in your story for seedling management. What you're looking at here is a little pot of basil, okay? So these have all been growing on quite nicely, but um, if you just have a wee look in the top corner here, okay, we've got one that's collapsed and bent over, okay? There's another one just here that's collapsed and bent over. Now what that can sometimes be a sign of is a little bit too many actually in the pot, and this is why we say to you, don't sow too densely. You want to sow thinly over the surface because what's happening here, I suspect, is what's known as damping off of seedlings. There are too many in the pot and what happens is the seedling starts to collapse. If you were to take this out, it would look pinched on the stem at the bottom and if you were to look very carefully, the stem would also be brown in colour. Now that's not good because if I left that in there, what will happen is you'll start to see white fungal growth round about that as well. It very, very rapidly spreads through the soil and through the water in the soil to all of the other seedlings in the pot. Okay, so I'm going to take this one out. Okay, we'll get rid of that. I'm going to take this one out. Now you can, oh, I'll try and zoom in here for you. I don't know if you can see there. I get my finger right there. See the brownness? On the stem there so that's a good wee telltale sign so I'm going to get a hold of that wee bad boy I'm going to pull that one out there as well okay and there's one here that's just starting to bend over so do you know what there's loads in there I'm going to take that one out as well okay so all of this is seedling management it's a fine art it takes a bit of practice you're not going to save every single seed Okay, so what we're looking at um, is a photograph which has been taken through a magnifying glass on my phone. So um, you'll just need to bear with for the next uh, little bit of video that's coming up as well. This is a picture of some white fly. Now these, there's at least ooh, one, two, three, four, maybe five there. Um, but these are little sap sucking aphids. Now what they do is they have specialised little mouth parts which break through the surfaces of the plant to get down into the sap below to feed on it and they can actually cause quite a bit of damage to your plants so you don't want these little guys living in your houses um, and in your conservatories or in your greenhouses you want to get rid of them they're not good they carry lots of diseases and viruses so tiny little bit of video here the problem with these guys is that they can multiply very very quickly so if you're finding these on your plants and your seedlings, give us a wee shout at Thursa Grows and we can give you some advice. Well, that's us reached the end um, of our little workshop. Uh, first and foremost, I hope that you've enjoyed it and I hope it's helped you just gain a little bit of confidence along the way and... Uh, just maybe giving you a few wee tips and a bit of advice and things. I guess that's the most important thing to remember is at the end of the day it's meant to be fun. Um, you're not going to get it right all the time. You are going to make mistakes and um, the best thing to do with that is just to learn from it. Um, so 
gosh, I can't remember the number of mistakes I've made over in the you know in the past few years that I've been trying this out. So you'll have times where things work really really well one year, and then you'll do exactly the same thing next year, and it doesn't work at all. So the one I'm thinking of is peas. Actually, I had uh, great success early on with um, peas, but. Um, Again, the following year, I tried exactly the same thing, using exactly the same compost and the same seeds, everything, and uh, I hardly got any through. So it's just the way it goes. Um, so don't don't allow it to um, to get in the way. Don't let it dishearten you, um, because you, you you can't win them all. Okay, so it's just one thing that you have to you have to learn to accept with gardening. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure if I'm there yet either myself, but. But keep at it, okay? Don't get disheartened and don't give up. Keep going. Um, so I, I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have been watching um, and you haven't yet got in contact with us regarding um, the wee questionnaire, um, because I know there's more people watching it than there's letting on, so um, if you could get in contact with us, then that would be great because it allows us um, just to capture the data that we need um, for Climate Challenge Fund, who of course are the people who have funded um, our projects for us at Thursday Grows, so um, that allows us to tick the boxes for them as well. And um, really I just wanted to say um, thanks to everybody that uh, comes along to the garden and helps out, all the volunteers. Um, thanks to you guys for watching and a wee thank you, just squeezing a wee thank you at the end there for Sharon. Um, because she's helped me come on further again um, with what I've learned on my course and things. I've learned a, a, an awful lot of information on that which was brilliant in terms of the theory side of things but Sharon has really helped me gain um, a lot more confidence um, when it comes to the actual practical side as well so I wanted to just say thank you to Sharon as well. Okay, um, keep going, keep trying new things Keep using the page. There are loads of ideas on the page. Um, if it's Anne's Eat Well Club, if it's recipes that Anne's got for you to, to try using up some of the leftover stuff. If you're composting, then let us know because uh, we'd love a baseline figure to start with and again send you another wee uh, questionnaire out and capture some more data from that as well. So if you're composting your food waste, tell us about that too. Um, and keep using the page, keep using the resources that we've got. Send your pictures in, we'd love to see them. We don't nearly get enough pictures posted on the page from you guys, so uh, yeah, give us your pictures and uh, have fun with it, okay? Take care everybody and uh, I hope to see you all up at the gardens uh, really, really soon, okay? Bye. By the way, if you're wondering what all the scratchy noises were in the background, it's just the dog. Bye.